What's going on, YouTubers? This is Osama Takea from Team Stand and Draw. What's going on, y'all? Uh, I haven't seen you guys in a while, and I have a deck profile here to toss at you. This is the uh, uh, Revival build for Bermuda Triangle, uh, Troyce, Rising Star Troyce. And uh, this build is more or less a competitive build. Troyce, the Rising Star Troyce was generally supposed to be looked at as, you know, as more of a fun deck, you know, to adapt to the, revi uh, to, uh, to the Legion meta. You know, as a card that's, that was revived for Revere. So, you know, it's more, about, more or less better to play it as a fun deck. But me, personally, I wanted to see what would happen if I could actually turn the deck into something more competitive that can fight against the current meta. I, you know, I actually wanted to try it out. And, you know, I've, I've played it against my friends, against Bill that actually, Bills that, I, that actually seem really powerful. And, you know, th it's actually fared pretty well. So, I want to see what you guys think about the build. I've actually seen other choice builds, and the builds were actually somewhat straightforward, somewhat unique. Some were more or less generally the same. But other than that, though, the decks seem pretty fun to play. And with that said, I want to see what you guys think of mine. Uh, I'll start. I'm holding on, I'm holding, you know, camera, by the way. Sorry about that. Things seem too, you know, things seem too crazy. Uh, starting, obviously, starting card. Starting unit is my Shizuku. Shizuku skill, grade 3 searcher. I love my grade 3 searches and my Bermuda Triangle build. I love my grade threes. Grade three searchers. Just like Morikawa likes his grade threes, I like my grade three searchers. So, uh, of course, their skill is uh, CB1, put into the soul. Uh, top five. Um, get a three, pop it into your hand, and shuffle. Next. Just move that over there for me. Let's see. I'm going I'm to I'm go up, then down. So, we'll go grade threes first. One, two, three, four. Uh, for Rising Choice, the main focus of the build, the Le Legion Revival, and it's also a restanding Vanguard that is not duo. Um, it's her skill is uh, CB3, drop 3, restand. Uh, heavy cost, yes, but it's very manageable if you're able to, if your build is proper enough to be able to pull off the skill more than once. Is the reason why we have damage on flippers, you know, to be able to unflip the damage and, you know, whack at them a second time around, especially if needed, so... That is that is something that you do you do need. So, and her second skill is obviously when she rides over the super idol revere from the chain ride of um, top idol. Um, when she rides it over the grade two, you search the deck for the grade three top idol revere and pop it into your hand in preparation for the persona blast when you legion. So you never miss the persona blast, and you have an opportunity to do it, of course. That is choice. This card is again, it's good. It's a good restander. You can't generally, you can't generally not get her skill off it's impossible to not do her skill to be into i say this only because it's like the whole point of the deck is choice but it's also revered at the same time however the way i play this deck i don't want the focus to be around the persona blast i want it to be around i want it to be a be around the restanding it's the reason why i it's actually focused in a perspective where it's able to fight against the higher meta card. Cause I'm not looking. I'm not looking to pull up the Persona Blast. The Persona Blast is a general alternative, like any other Legion. So your better focus is to try to get the rest the restand off, and not the Persona that Persona Blast. Excuse me. The Persona Blast is generally there if you feel like there's a specific role that's not hitting for a number that you you know that you actually like. In which case, you use the Persona Blast to buff up that role. So then, when you swing, you could buff it up some more. That's the reason why. So again, choice of the card. Uh, next is one. Two, three. I run three to grade three. Top out of Revere. Top out of Revere skill. First skill obviously becomes 11k when the grade two is inside the soul. And the second skill is a Persona Blast. Counter Blast 2. Drop a copy of Top out of Revere and add 5k to three units on the field. Again, this has helped when it's in Legion to help buff up uh, a couple of units on the field to establish some good numbers in case somebody actually got a trigger. This down the third. Something more or less likely your rolls are going to be hitting over 21. It's just the reason why you want to pull up the Persona Blast if it's needed. If you're not swinging any, anywhere along the lines where your opponent is not dropping a 10, you want to make sure they drop a 10 so you add that 5k there. That's generally the only reason. So top out is a good card. Great twos. One, two, three. I run three flute, three flute, um, flute skill. Obviously, if there's four more, four more Bermudas on the field, she becomes an 11K swinger. She's generally good to hit good numbers. Anything above the lines of 31, if you decide to apply all effects to flute when you restand, she's good to hit really good numbers. She's she's definitely one of the reasons why building a deck with choice is actually, you know, it's possible. Because you, you actually have units inside the deck that are actually capable of hitting good numbers that aren't archetype reliant. 
So having Flute here is actually a good plus. She's actually really good. That 11K is very handy. And 90% of the time, you're going to have a full field. Most likely, unless you're fighting Kagura and they decide to decimate your field. That's a different story. Next one, two. I decided to add Bouncing Fundamental to the deck. That being Charlotte, she's a 9K also. 9K being a good base number to be able to swing with, to pull off her skill if they decide to, if they decide to guard it. Her being a 9K, having a 7K and or 8K behind a 9 times out of 10, you're dropping a 10 for me. So if I don't get the skill, you're dropping a 10. One less 10 I have to worry about for you to guard with and a better number for me to swing with so you can't guard. So that's the reason why she is. She is definitely here for the good applying of pressure. That's why Charlotte's good. Oh, and her obviously her skill is um, uh, CB1. When it hits the Vanguard, you bounce her and call something other than her to the field. So again, I needed to add adding, I needed to add bounce fundamental to the deck, and that's why Charlotte's here. She's good for pressure and also bouncing. Next is one, two, three, three to Super Idol. Super Idol skill, obviously grade two with the chain ride. First skill, if you have grade one inside the soul, becomes a 10k. Second skill, if you ride the grade three with the grade one inside the soul, you get to draw a card for free through, tra through the chain ride process. So obviously, again, Revere was known to be uh, uh, to not, you know, it was Revere was known to be a rushdown deck and not necessarily a deck that was capable of achieving good hand power unless it was through its chain ride. So this is generally just it's it's an alternative, technically speaking. In, in which I'm trying to say is, you know, I don't necessarily need to ride Super Idol because I have other options. And it's true, hypothetically speaking, if I do ride into the grade, if I run into top, if I, you know, ride top, top Idol without the grade two inside of Soul, I will be a 10K. But that, that almost never happens. So hypothetically, when it does, I will have achieved enough hand power to, you know, to block enough. So the only thing that does take a hit is the Vanguard. So I don't have to worry too much about it. But of course, again, the grade two is uh, the grade two is generally here to help help pull off other skills inside the deck. It being the chain ride is also a reason why top idol reveal becomes an 11k and it becomes fundamentally good once it achieves that 11k. So next is one two three four full Bulgarian 10k B stick. You obviously she's she's more or less my ideal ride in a sense. I actually like 10ks, especially when it becomes my second ride. Because you know it's good defense. Anybody throws in, it throws in any units that aren't 10k swingers. So by default, if they're not 10k swingers and or 12k swingers, those are not hitting you unless they drop another card from hand to get the number they need to swing at the 10. So it's good defense. And all you more, more or less likely have to do is drop a 5. Drop a card. So that's why the Garen's here. Good defense. I don't have to worry about taking damage too early. Great ones. One. Two. I run to Amur. Amur's skill. Drop and draw. She's generally here to help me pull off the Legion faster. Early game, I play a Mur. And obviously, I have my Vanguard. I swing, get the hit, drop, draw, drop as many cards as needed until I make it to grade three. When my opponent reaches grade three, by the time we get to that point, I already have four, four cards dropped. Into the, and I already have four cards in the drop zone, in which case I can pull off the Legion when we both achieve grade three. And I won't have to wait an extra turn to drop any more cards. So that's a lot easier for me. Next is one, two. Three, Faluka's a second giant asset of the deck. She helps it helps me uh, you know pull off all the all the combos I need because I generally need the soul to do so. Her skills on placement on rear guard and or advanced soul charge one. I need this. Well, Faluka's generally a necessity. If you don't have Faluka inside a deck, how are you necessarily gonna pull off choices effect more than once? Because you need to be able to use Kura's skill to unflip. Yes, you can do the so you could do Kura's skill by generally soul blasting the cards that are already written. That's fine. But what happens if you want to maintain the 11k base for top out of Revere? In which case, if you do so, you're not swinging for 21, you're swinging for 22. 1k more can make such a big difference in more ways than one. So, and 90% of the, no, not even 90% of the time, almost 100% of the time, I always have the grade 2 inside the soul. And I never have to give her up unless I really have to. But I almost never do, in which case, soul charging in any other card to do with her skill is not necessarily a problem. And then, you know, also soul charging cards into the soul also allows me to soul blast cards into the drop zone early and or late game to either redo the Legion or do the Legion when I have to. So it goes both ways. One, two, three. I want three perfs. Four perfs is uh, is due to uh, not running four perfs is due to general preference. Also, because I want to run my great ones the way I wish them to be run. So having four is generally cloggy, and I necessarily don't find myself in too many situations where I have to spam the perfect guards too often. So that's why she, that's why I only run three. 
next to Big Boss with the gray ones. I want three curve. Yes, I would run four, but um, of course, just like I said again, I want to run my gray ones in a way that I'll be able to pull off majority of my skills inside the deck. So I run three of her, and three is all all I generally need. So. And in a possible scenario, one gets soul charged in, I will be soul blasting her, and I'll probably have one in hand more or less likely to be able to do the skill. And then I'll legion it back and inside the deck, so if I happen to draw it and I'm still alive in some way, shape, and or form, I can play her, do the skill, on flip and swing. So, running three of her isn't generally too bad. It's actually perfect. It's not too cloggy. I, per I personally don't like cloggy, cloggy lineups. And, last but not least, is two oral. So Oral is good for the general drawing of the deck. I need to be able to, at any point in time, early and or late game, to pull a choices effect and or to have the hand power to guard. I need Oral here to Soul Blast. And if, I, if I'm already in Legion and I don't plan to Legion anytime soon and I have enough soul to be able to do a, a one, one, more than one skill, that being Cora and Oral skill, then I'll do Oral skill and Soul Blast to get an extra card. So that's three cards at the end of the day after I drive check. So she's good. She's here to attain a better hand power. Triggers is one, two... Three, four, four heal. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have a shape. Um, six crit. Obviously, you need the pressure in the deck for the six crit. You need, your choice needs to be able to get at least maybe one or two crits at some point during her restand. That way, it applies more pressure. And if choice doesn't successfully get the crit swing, you can apply all effects to the rear guard, in which case you'll be sticking for more than 21, 26, 27, 31. It flutes on the field, 31 or higher. So you're generally swinging for a really crazy number with crit on it. So that's the reason why we run six crit. You don't want to run two little crits. You want to have enough crits to be able to scare your opponent. That's what you need. You need to you need to let your opponent know that this deck's that this competitive sort of build is not generally a pushover, and that there are enough crits in here for me to pull one and add all effects to a van or rear guard with a number that's swinging really high. So they need to drop that perfect guard for me or 90% of the hand. I do want that. As to why six crits is being run. Next is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six draw. Six draw generally needed. You need six draws to funnel it. You need to you need six draws to run the deck smoothly enough to have the hand power to guard. Also to drop the cards needed to be able to pull a choice effect more than once. You need the cards. So and also funnies in here being a special draw trigger to apply 3k to any row that you feel like needs to establish a good number. So not only are you providing yourself with soul to pull off Kura and or Oral's effect or any other soul blast effect. But you're also adding power to rows that need the numbers. So you're generally, you know, you're, you know, you're adding a plus to yourself in a sense. So you're, you're, you're kind of knocking out two birds with one stone. So you're already prepping up for something big, either later game, you know, early or later game. It doesn't matter. Whenever, whenever you decide to use Fundy, being the special draw trigger, you use her. And everything is pretty much all well and ready, ready and set. So just go start doing stuff. Fundy is obviously the special draw. If you don't have her in the deck, you may be doing it wrong. Maybe. Because you kind of do need the special draw trigger. And last but not least, the 50th card, the special card. Flores. Back all the way running two to BT2. Very old card. Yes, indeed an old card. But I prefer she is the second fundamental form of bouncing in the deck. Now, whenever you do run into her to play her own rear guard, she is a problem. She's very annoying. Even being a 10k base, she's still very annoying. If anything else, might as well look her at her. Um, I look at her as a great two. But her skill, obviously, she hits anything on the field, vent or rear. So blast two and bounce something to your hand. More or less free of charge. So, again, second fundamental form of bouncing in the deck. You don't need too many means to bounce, but you want to have some form of bouncing. In a possible scenario that, you know, let's say Flores is swinging. Flores with, um, with Feluca. 17, get a trigger, 22. I'm going to swing at your rear guard for 22. You're going to drop a 10 and a 5 to guard your rear guard? I wouldn't let me. I wouldn't do it because I'd rather keep the card in your hand. Just let me get the hit and let me bounce something. But if you're that desperate to not let me, you know, get the bounce, then that's cause from your hand. So personally, I'm happy. So, you know, she's obviously here just to be annoying. And she's also really good at the same time. Even being a 10K, her skill is still fundamentally nice. Because, again, I will have the proper soul to be able to use her effect. So that's that's why she's here. That's it and done. That is my choice deck. Um, have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. This is Asama Talk here from Team Stand and Draw. And I will see you guys later.